Hey guys, it's me, Maximilian Zentis, aka Rosentwig, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about, and I'm gonna show you a bit about modal interchange or modal mixture or however you want to call that. But before we actually start, a quick disclaimer, I'm not gonna be going super Adam Neely music theoretically on uh, in this video here, because um, I really want to keep it somewhat simple. First of all, because I want newer producers to maybe get something out of this, but also I want to keep it at least a little bit interesting for the non-producers, even though this is probably a video more uh, for the producing and composing community. Um, but yeah, um, also because I'm, I would say like on an intermediate level in terms of music theory and there are people out there who, are, who know way more than I do and they should talk more about the music theory aspect of it. I'm just gonna be very practical about it, how I use it. And that's actually how we're gonna start. I'm gonna show you a short musical progression I wrote for my track um, Canadian Airlines on my latest release, Yugen. Um, you can listen to that in the description as well. Uh, the chord progression I used in there uses or makes use of modal interchange and it sounds like this. <laughs> Uh, so, as I said, I'm not going to be going too deep into music theory. That being said, I need to talk a bit about the very basics. Modal mixture or modal interchange is a really broad topic where I really couldn't make a video, like a 10 minute video, to uh, explain everything. Um, so I'm really going to focus on giving you a simple example. Um, I'm actually going to be using the modes uh, Ionian and Aeolian, uh, which are just major and minor, um, but that's their name in the mode structure. But I will be leaving uh, like, a, like a cheat sheet or whatever you want to call it in the description um, with all the modes so you can look through that if you're interested. Um, so just to make, just to be sure, we're just going to use the, 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 the key of C and um, the scale you probably are most familiar with, uh, or the scales actually, are major and minor. So the major C scale goes from C and goes, it basically just goes through all the white notes and you end up on the C again, so like this. That's C major. C minor is this. As you can see, instead of playing all the white notes, we actually have three black notes in there, uh, or black keys, or however you want to say that. Um, so, the C and the D stay, but from to go from major to minor, we change the E natural to an E flat, we stay with the F, we keep the G, um, <laughs> we, we, we take the A and make it flat, and we take the B and make it flat. And yeah, so as a, again, this is major, this is minor. Okay, that, now that we know this, um, we're just going to take a very basic melodic harmonic idea or whatever, um, which is the intro to the Stranger Things series, which goes like this, you probably know it. A little bit slower, but that's basically what it is. And um, it's a C major 7 chord with an added 8th. That means we're just taking the root note, the C, and adding it one octave. That's the chord. And we're arpeggiating it, meaning I'm playing it like up and down, like this. It's an up and down arpeggiation, or whatever you want to call it. To now use modal interchange on this, or with this, we're just going to look at, the, uh, at another mode, because as I said, this C major is also called Ionian mode. And we're now gonna look at the Aeolian mode, which is minor, like I said. So, to go from C major 7 with an added 8th to minor, we just have to play a C minor 7 chord with an added 8th. Meaning we have to look, the third note, if we remember the scale, has not to be E natural, but it has to be E flat. We can keep the G, we don't have to um, change that, but we do have to change the B. We're not using the A, so we don't have to worry about this, but we do have to worry about this one, because in C minor, uh, or C major, we're playing the B natural, but in C minor we need the B flat. So basically we're playing this chord. We just change two notes. 
we flattened two notes basically. And um, if we just just play the chord in itself, we go from C major seven with an added eighth to C minor seven with an added eighth. And if we arpeggiate this now, it sounds like this. And it already has this kind of mysterious, kind of ominous kind of vibe to it. For example, we could now add uh, some bass notes to it, like, like the, playing the root notes and maybe doing like a little bit of a rundown and up thing. Um, so for example, we could do this. And um, yeah, that's basically it. That's how easy it can be. Like I said, there are tons of million options because there are a lot of different modes. For example, one mode, with, one mode which is very popular is the Lydian mode, which would sound like this. You probably know this from the Zelda soundtrack. Um, and um, yeah, you could use that as well. You could use Dorian, you could use, use Phrygian, but as I said, we just, we just try to keep it simple and uh, yeah, you can use this for harmony, you can use this for melody. Uh, I really like to use it for um, chords and for arpeggios, but as I said, you can use this for basically everything. Uh, okay, so my main camera just went out of juice. I hope it doesn't bother you guys too much, uh, but I don't have time to wait uh, to recharge those batteries. Um, what, I, what I was about to say is if you change or if you try to compose with this technique, I would advise to first start with the with a modal interchange in harmony because um, if you if you got a if you got a harmony that changes mode, it's much easier to do a, a melody on top of that that changes modes because you can do like a normal harmony and only have the the melody change modes, but that's more advanced um, because if the chords give you the structure basically, for example, with with our example here, with going from C major to C minor, um, you have your structure laid out for you. you. In the first part, when you play the C major, you have to play the melody in C major, and if you play, it in, if you play the C minor chord, you have to play in C minor. Um, for example, I'm just going to add a very basic melody just to uh, show this. I'm just going to use the, the first and the seventh um, of each mode. So in major, I'm going to play, and in minor, I'm going to play. So. And that's it. Um, there are tons of examples of music that uses this. For example, Boss of Canada really likes to use this. Um, but a lot of music, especially in the film and video game industry. For example, the Tristram theme from, uh, from Diablo is a really classic sound. And all this is, is really just taking this big chord and just changing the E. So basically just one note, because this is just an octave, from to just a flat. And it gives a totally different mood. It's really nice. Um, anyways, if you have any further questions, let me know. I will surely and gladly answer it. Um, or if I can at least, uh, otherwise I'm going to point you to Adam Neely or someone uh, like that. Um, yeah, but I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like. Uh, also be sure to hit that subscribe bar bell thing um, that everybody tells you to hit nowadays. Uh, <laughs> also follow me on my social media things. You know the drill. Uh, see you next time, guys. Bye.